take a look at how the Kenyan markets have fared uh, or how the Kenyan markets closed yesterday. As you can see, another bounce on the day up by a third of a percent, 4,546 points is what we're looking at. When it comes to the overall currency, it has been under pressure against the dollar that's uh, as of yesterday, but it seems that it is bouncing back this morning up 1% at 86.15 against the dollar. Well, let's cross over to Kenya, get an update on what's taking place with regards to the election and uh, what stocks we're seeing moving, uh, we're expected to see move on uh, this trading day. Um, uh, Anthony Kamani, research analyst at Genghis Capital, is our market watcher. Anthony, thanks for joining us today. It seems that we're still in wait and see mode, waiting for the election results. Give us the latest on that front. Uh, elections, the counting is still going on. As of today, we, as of today morning, we had already counted probably a third of the polling stations. We are still waiting for two thirds to go through, and for now, it's too early to call any winner or to predict who will win the election. But we are sort of seeing people are, are sort of waiting for those results anxiously, but. Yeah, there's nothing much to report on that front other than a third of the votes have already been counted. Mm -hmm. Just looking at uh, yes. the way the economy has been affected, I mean, it's uh, being reported that everything almost at a standstill right now. You're looking at uh, big supermarket chains like Nakamut uh, still being closed, uh, all the Matatus uh, still not running. I mean, is that really the case? Is, is, are things just waiting uh, right now for a conclusion when it comes to the election results uh, till till business starts? picking up again? Uh, what we saw for the past two days, especially on Tuesday immediately after the election, there was a slowdown in business. There were, there were a lot of things that weren't working, transportation, ETC. But as the days have gone by and of much of today, what we are seeing is that people are actually out and about. They are coming to work. It's sort of the election fever is sort of out of the air and people it's not something that I would say is at the top of everybody's mind. You are seeing people coming back to work. Yeah, so things are sort of returning back to normal with or without uh, an election result. I think people are sort of confident that by Monday we should have a result and mm -hmm. however it turns out we don't see the need of suspending our business activities for a week for that to come out. So yeah, I'd say things are back to normal. Uh, as opposed to what we saw on Tuesday. Yeah, so let's get back to the markets and taking a look at some news after KCB receiving a 12.9 billion shilling loan. That's from the International Finance Corporation. Uh, that's to help it extend lending to the uh, mortgage borrowers, also the SMME sector. Um, to what extent do you see this giving it an edge over other rivals, of course, because they're going to have to pay higher interest rates on, on deposits in order to extend loans? Uh, According to me, I wouldn't say that it's much of an edge per se, because if you look at uh, HFCK, for instance, they sort of did the same thing when they went out and borrowed from the mass market. We are seeing equity. They also have a loan that's been extended to them by international donors. So to me, I, I wouldn't say that there is much of an edge there, because um, KCB recently reported some of their results and what we saw and what I'm concerned about personally is a cost income ratio of something above 54 percent and when you look at other banks let's say equity for example their cost to income ratio was about 49 percent so yeah so to me I'd say they need to they, 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 they'll, get, they, they'll benefit more from reduction of their costs than they would from lending out more. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to that cost yeah. to income ratio, what's the, the key driver of that? Is it expenditure on expansionary activities or is it uh, operating expenses and more day-to-day -day, uh, banking activities that's driving those costs? Uh, costs are being driven mostly by expansion activities and to some extent um, the operation costs they mentioned recently that they are going to have to lay off some of their staff ex especially top management and on the expansion front we are seeing them say that they'll go out to the market and sort of expand using a m more uh, ICT based expansion using for example the mobile phone technologies mm -hmm. and expand from that front they are already in talks with 
with Safaricom to do that. We saw Equity execute that strategy well in the last financial year. Um, mobile subscribers are up 400% to 2 million. And I'd say this is some of the indication that this is where banking is headed and not relying more on the brick and mortar model that we've been seeing. Let's move on to, to the oil sector and fuel marketer Kennel Coble because uh, issuing a profit warning, the stock slid by almost 10%, sitting at around 11 shillings and 15 cents right now. But overall, it seems that uh, the fortunes have turned for the company. That's uh, post the announcement that Puma Energy is not looking uh, to buy out Kennel. Um, so, so what do you do, what were your thoughts rather on, on the outlook for the company right now, given the fact that uh, earnings are going to be under pressure and of course they're not going to have the backing of uh, Puma Energy now? Oh, well, I'm expecting the stock will continue falling. Remember, the merger with Puma Energy has been in trouble from the get-go. We saw workers take Kennel Cobill to court, uh, fearing that they'd, they'd lose their jobs. We saw Total and KPC come to claim dues. Uh, that Kennel co below them. So a lot of things were actively working against this merger and also to mention that the tax authorities have also claimed that any transfer of assets would need to be taxed like they would for an oil extraction company. So it's a lot of things and a lot of headwinds that have actually been facing Kennel Cobill and for me I don't think that there's a lot that they can do for now because if you look at the, 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 the margins, all, for, for instance, those margins and price controls that are coming on from the Energy Regulatory Commission, mm -hmm. there's very little headroom to manoeuvre in terms of how they can manipulate that profit earnings, or sorry, how they can manoeuvre that profit earning uh, to, and try and raise it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'd say the stock is still going to go down somewhat, because remember it was actually showed up by the merger talks and not anything fundamental that had actually changed in their business. Well, let's uh, turn our attention to what we're expecting today because the all share index was up for one and a tenth of a percent yesterday, NSE 20 up by a third of a percent. Uh, so where are you expecting buying specifically in the market? Which stocks do you have your eye on? Um, we are still looking at HFCK. Uh, we think it's a good counter. We are also look. We are also thinking that EABL might go up today. We are also looking at Scan Group. Yeah. So those are the three counters that we have our eyes on. Especially Scan Group. It fell down last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it dipped a little, and we are thinking that we should see it hit levels of se around 70 today.